Today's video is going to be so much fun because we're going to be making some player predictions for the 2024 MLB season. But I'm not alone in today's video. I've brought in some very special guests and they're going to be making some predictions of their own. So stay tuned for that. Now we are going to have to make a part two to today's video predicting division winners as well as a World Series matchup. I just can't do that today because Scott Boris is Scott Borising. I can't really predict the future without knowing where Bellinger and Snell are going to go. Will Shohei Otani become the second player ever to win an MVP in both the AL and the NL? Can Juan Soto take advantage of that short porch in Yankee Stadium? Who's going to be the stolen base champion in each league? And also, which rookies are going to take the league by storm? We're going to try and predict all of that right now. Now, last year, I predicted that Matt Olson and Ronald Acuna Jr. were going to be number one in home runs and stolen bases. That happened. I also said that Class A would be number one in saves and Corbin Carroll would win rookie of the year. Both of those happen as well. But I also chose Alec Manoa as my ERA leader and the Padres to win the World Series. San Diego didn't make the playoffs and Alec Manoa was sent to Florida to face 17-year-olds. So take my predictions with a grain of salt and let's get into today's video. The first prediction, I think that we're going to hit 500,000 subs before opening day. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you. We'll talk about MVPs, Rookies of the Year, and Cy Youngs later on in the video. But as you can see, the easiest prediction to make the batting champion in the NL, it's got to be Luis Arise. Now, maybe you think Jeff McNeil is going to bounce back or Freddie Freeman might hit 370. But for me, Luis Arise, because he unlocked the power in the final month of the season, he had five home runs and a 385 batting average in the final month of the season. And oh, by the way, he only struck out two times. So because of his all-time bat-to-ball skills, I think he could win his third consecutive batting title in a row. Now for the American League, I was tempted to go with Jose Altuve. To me, he's going to reward the Astros for that contract extension, but I think he'd be kind of stupid to not go with Corey Seager. Corey Seager without the shift is quite literally one of the greatest offensive talents in the history of infielders. I'm talking about in real life. I'm talking about road to the show. Corey Seager is that guy. Not only does he tear covers off of baseballs when he makes contact, he was top 4% in average exit velocity. He's also really good at not striking out. He was top 16% at not doing that. From 2015 to 2016, Corey Seager had a 312 batting average in his first 184 games. So he's been this guy for a while. Last year, he had 42 doubles and 33 home runs while hitting 327 in 119 games. Seager is a legitimate MVP candidate, but is he going to win? We'll talk about that later on. You all know that chicks dig the long ball. So let's talk about some home run kings for the 2024 season. I got to go Aaron Judge in the AL. Judge had 52 home Home runs in his rookie season. He set an AL record a few years later with 62 home runs and he had 37 last year despite missing 56 games. And a fun fact from Fuzzy, he is second all time in at bats per home run just behind a balanced breakfast Mark McGuire. I'm going to get clowned on for this, but I feel like a thinned up Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is going to start pulling the ball more. He could also challenge this, but I got to go Aaron Judge. I could be using my heart for this next prediction because Pete Alonso came out and said that he will be donating $1,000 for every single home run that he hits. In 2024, so I hope that he hits 87. Now, you know how we talked about Aaron Judge being second all time in at bats per home run? Well, Pete Alonso would be fifth all time with a 13.18 at bats per home run, just behind Mark McGuire, Judge, Babe Ruth, and Barry Bonds. So, Judge and Alonso, they're all time power threats, and I think that they're going to be back at the top in the next season. Who is going to lead the NL and RBIs next year? Matt Olson has a career 907 OPS with runners in scoring position. He had 139 last year. But I'm going with Shohei Otani. Last year for the Angels, Shohei Otani hit 320 with a near 190, 190 OPS plus with runners in scoring position. But now that he's in that Dodgers lineup, he's going to have Freddie Freeman as protection behind him. And also Mookie Betts at the one spot and Gavin Lux at the ninth spot. He's going to have runners on base for him almost every single at bat. And honestly, if it's not going to be Shohei Otani, I think it's going to be Freddie Freeman. For the second straight season, a Houston Astro will be number one in RBIs in the AL, but it's not going to be Kyle Tucker. I'm going with Air Jordan, Jordan Alvarez. He has a 321 batting average and a near 640 slugging percentage with runners in scoring position. And he had 97 RBIs last year, even though he missed almost 50 games. How do you do that? We've seen Jordan do it in the playoffs. We've seen him do it over the course of his regular season career. I just think that Jordan is one of the clutchest hitters we've ever seen, and this is an easy prediction for me. Let's talk about some guys who are very, very fast. The leader in AL stolen bases, I got to go with the guy who also led last year, Este Uriuiz. He had 67 stolen bases despite a pretty bad 309 on base percentage, but to end the season, check this out. In his final 26 games, Este Uri, he looked like his AAA self 
himself. He hit 318 with a 360 on base percentage. The only person that I think really challenging Este Iri Ruiz in the AL is probably Bobby Witt Jr., but I'm going to go Ruiz. The NL stolen base leader is probably the toughest prediction for me of the entire video. You have Ellie De La Cruz with 35 stolen bases in 98 games. CJ Abrams, we'll talk about him in a second because he's probably my guy. You have Ronald Acuna Jr., Corbin Carroll, Trey Turner, Fernando Tatis Jr., and also a guy you might have never heard of before, Victor Scott. Last year in the minors, he hit 300 with 94 stolen bases. But I'm going to go with CJ Abrams because what I'm about to read to you should not be allowed. CJ went 41 of 43 stolen bases over his final 88 games. 41 stolen bases, two caught stealing over 88 games. He was on pace for almost 80. But then again, Ronald literally just had 70. Corbin had 50. Ellie is all-time fast as well, and he's tall. Who's going to be the guy? I'm going with CJ Abrams. So that does it for right now in terms of offensive predictions. Let's talk about some pitchers now. This might be a cop-out prediction, but for the ERA leader in the AL, I'm going to go with Garrett Cole. He's led MLB in ERA twice already and to end the season over his final 21 starts last year and route to winning his first ever Cy Young. He held his opponents to a 202 batting average, and he had a 2.4 ERA. There's not really much else to say. He's Garrett freaking Cole. And for the second straight year, I'm going with Max Fried to lead an ERA in the National League. He has a 2.66 ERA since 2020. He also set a career high in strikeouts per nine last year. So the fact that the strikeouts were up, he's one of the best at limiting barrels and hard hits and not allowing walks. I think that Max Fried is primed to have a breakout year. But will he win Cy Young? Someone on his own team might be challenging for that. Who is that man you ask? It is Spencer Strikeout Strider. This kid has 483 strikeouts over his last 318 innings. What even is that? He's a starting pitcher, not Edwin Diaz. He has set strikeout records left and right to begin his career, so there's not really much else I can say. Spencer Strider, he's going to easily lead the NL in strikeouts. Switching to the AL, I wanted to go with Kevin Gosman, but I think that Dylan Cease is going to break out all over again after regressing in 2023. I think we're going to see some of that 2022 Dylan Cease. The reason why I went with Dylan Cease is because he's one of the best in the business and not only throwing that fastball as hard as physically possible, but also getting whiffs. What is a whiff? A whiff is a swing and miss on something inside the strike zone. So even though it's technically hittable because it's within reach, Dylan Cease is so nasty that you're still going to miss it more often than not. I wanted to go with Blake Snell because he's all-time nasty, but because he threw 180 innings last year, the last time that we saw him throw that many innings, it was when he won the Cy Young with the Rays. He wasn't very good the next season, so I'm expecting a little bit of regression, but he's still going to be nasty. Josh Hader has set himself up to potentially have his first ever 50 save season. I think Hader could be that good for the Astros this year. I say that because he has the perfect storm to accumulate save after save after save because the Astros have a great offense, but also they have shut down guys in front of Josh Hader and Ryan Presley and Brian Abreu. And also their starting pitching is going to be good, but I feel like the Astros will be in some close ball games throughout the year. And I think that 50 could be a possibility for Josh Hader. He's my guy in the AL, not Emmanuel Classe. My head is saying Devin Williams is by far the safer pick to lead the NL in saves but I'm going with my heart. I'm going sugar, Edwin Diaz. The last time that we saw Edwin Diaz, it almost doesn't make sense how nasty he was. He had a 1.31 ERA, 32 saves, and get this, he had 118 strikeouts in 62 innings. That is a 17.1 strikeouts per nine. He was top 10 in the Cy Young as a relief pitcher. And it's not like we haven't seen Edwin Diaz go crazy in the save department. He had 57 saves back in 2018. I don't know if he's going to get up to 57, but I think that both Hayter and Diaz could challenge 50. So that does it for all of these stat predictions. Let's talk about some award predictions. For the comeback player of the year in the AL, I wanted to go with Alec Manoa. I feel like his story is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Maybe even a Trevor story of the Boston Red Sox, but I'm going to go with the Red Sox rival, the Yankees and Carlos Rodon. From 2021 to 2020, 22, Carlos Rodon was one of the best pitchers in baseball. He combined for a 2.6 ERA and a 2.4 FIP. FIP is fielding independent of pitching. How good is a pitcher at not allowing walks? The reason why he eroded in 2023, it's pretty simple. One, he was dealing with that ailing shoulder. And because of that, the home runs per nine tripled. He went from a 0.7 home runs per nine between 2021 and 2022 to a 2.1 home runs per nine. 
he was getting lit up. But if you're asking me, Carlos really took last year to heart. He looks healthy going into spring training, and I feel like we're about to see a 2.8 version of Carlos Rodon. Kind of the NL version of Carlos Rodon, Chris Sale. It kind of blows my mind that neither Rodon or Sale have won a Cy Young considering how nasty they've been for as long. But yeah, neither of them have that award on their side. But just like Carlos Rodon, Chris Sale is trying to come back from injury, and he was not the best last year despite being pretty nasty. He had 125 strikeouts and 102 innings, but the ERA, it wasn't pretty. A 4.3 ERA and the fifth was at 3.8 so it's still pretty good because he's so good at striking guys out but he also allowed more home runs and walked more guys last year and that's not a good combination but to me for the Braves I think he's gonna bounce back I'm gonna go with a Rangers rookie but it's not gonna be Evan Carter I'm going with Wyatt Langford in his final season at Florida Wyatt had 21 home runs with a 373 batting average he goes to the minors he hits 385 in rookie ball 333 in single a 405 in double a and then 368 in triple a what did I just say out loud? So in his first 44 minor league games, Wyatt Langford had 17 doubles, 10 home runs, 12 stolen bases, and a 1157 OPS. Those are cartoon wrote to the show numbers. Now, before I reveal my NL Rookie of the Year, let's go to a guy who just had 100,000 subs, Jolly Olive. The rookie class in both leagues is absolutely stacked this year. National League has Yamamoto and Jung-Hoo Lee. I'm gonna go with Jackson Chirillo of the Milwaukee Brewers. Got that eight-year deal. I think he's got it in him. I think he's going to win National League Rookie of the Year. You really had to go with a former Guardian prospect? We've been through enough. Hey, Jolly, congrats again on 100,000 subs, but I'm going to go with the cop-out answer. I'm going with Yamamoto. I don't know if Paul Skeens is going to break camp with the Pirates. I think that he's going to. So if he does, this pick is probably going to be wrong because I think he's that good. You also have a generational defender and base runner in Pete Crow Armstrong of the Cubs. There's also a guy who used to be a super prospect, Marco Luciano. But again, for me, I'm going with Yamamoto of the Dodgers. They just gave this guy $325 million. So they're going to make sure they get the most out of him. He'll probably approach 28 to 32 stars. And when you have Freddie Freeman coming out and saying that his stuff is nasty and he's happy that he's on the Dodgers and not any other team, I'm going to trust Freddie Freeman over anyone else. For this Cy Young, I know we talked about Garrett Cole leading in ERA, but every fiber in me wants to say that Tarek Skubal of the Tigers is going to break out and win Cy Young, but... I'm not going to do that. I got to go with Garrett Cole. Not really much else to say. He's a complete package as a pitcher. He's going to have a low ERA and strike a lot of guys out. And the same can be said for Spencer Strider. We saw his ERA balloon last year, but I think getting beat up in the playoffs is going to really haunt him. And then he's going to take it out on the rest of the league. So 2024 is going to be the year where Spencer Strider gets his first Cy Young. But again, that's just my prediction. The moment that we've all been waiting for, who is going to win AL and NL MVP? And before I give my predictions, we have Giraffe Nick Mark and Foolish Baseball with their predictions. All right, Fuzzy, you asked for my AL. MVP. We're battling strep throat out here, but we're going to get it for you. Bobby Witt Jr. Kansas City Royals are going to surprise people. Bobby Witt Jr. was incredible last year, and I think there's even a little bit more room for improvement in his game. I think it's going to be a huge year for the Royals. I think Bobby Witt's going to make a big splash again, and he's going to end up winning the AL MVP because nobody expects that team to be good. I don't think they're going to be good, but they have a chance to win the AL Central for sure. So I'm going with Bobby Witt Jr. You know, some of y'all are doing predictions. But I'm a numbers guy, so I have to do a projection. So I'm going to do a projection of the season in my head really quick. Mm, da, 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 da. Carry the 1, multiply by 0.74, square of the coefficient. Uh, the 2024 National League MVP will be Austin Riley. Beautiful day in Atlanta, Georgia. Mark went with Bobby Witt Jr. in the AL, and Bailey went with Austin Riley in the NL. Those are some fun picks. And also, make sure you guys subscribe to Jolly, Mark, and Foolish. Their links are in the description down below. I have some different predictions for the MVPs. I want to go with Mike Trout. I feel like because he's still top 4% in speed and he's played way better defense over the last few years, if he can stay healthy, we're going to see prime Mike Trout all over again. What about a J-Rod? Nah, I'm going to go Aaron Judge. It's basically been confirmed that Aaron Boone is going to keep Aaron Judge at the two spot. So Juan Soto, he's going to be a three hitter. That is all-time protection. So I think that Aaron Judge, he's going to get some cookies this year. And for my NL MVP, I'm going with a junior, not Ronald, Fernando Tatis Jr. And I really feel like there's a lot of parallels to he and Ronald because Ronald, he missed a lot of time with injury. He came back. He was good, but not great. Fernando, he comes back and plays platinum defense in right field, but offensively, a 113 OPS plus. That could use a lot of work. And to me, now that he has kind of all the rust off his shoulders, I think the walk percentage is going to be back in line. He's probably going to cut down on the strikeouts. We could see a 40-40 Tatis with platinum defense. I think it could happen. So those are my predictions. What about you guys? Pesky Talk says Mike Trout is going to play 150 plus games and win AL MVP. By the way, he has a YouTube channel. 
Go sub to him. Christian Gallo says that Corbin Carroll is going to steal 75 bags and hit 25 home runs. Landon went with a different NL Rookie of the Year. He's going with Pete Crow Armstrong. Bez agrees with Giraffe Neck Mark. He went with Bobby Wood Jr. as the AL MVP. Ooh, Ethan says that Yamamoto is not only going to win Rookie of the Year like I predicted, he thinks that he's going to win Cy Young as well. Just like I predicted, Brent thinks that Carlos Rodon is going to have a bounce back year, but he thinks that he's going to bounce back and win AL Cy Young. Thomas thinks that the Tigers prospect Cole Keith is going to win AL Rookie of the Year. Joski is predicting that O'Neill Cruz is going to go 30-30 and the Pirates will make the playoffs. And last but not least, Brian, he thinks that Vlad is going to win AL MVP. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a huge favor, leave a like, send this to a friend. And if you have not hit that subscribe button yet, we are so close to 500,000. Join the team, hit that button.